Bill Shorten has declared next month's election a referendum on Medicare. A vow to keep the healthcare system public was at the centre of the Labor leader's official campaign launch. Three former Prime Ministers turned out for Mr Shorten's final pitch, which also included the promise of a small business tax break for hiring workers. Political editor Chris Yulman begins our coverage in the Western Sydney heartland Labor needs to reclaim on the 2nd of July. We're coming to you tonight from the Nepean Rowers Club in Penrith. It's in the marginal seat of Lindsay in Sydney's west and it's currently held by the Liberals. Now, if Bill Shorten wants to become Prime Minister, he has to win seats like this and voters like these. He made an impassioned speech today to the Labor faithful saying that the party is still in the fight and that the country needs him and not Malcolm Turnbull. Here's National Affairs correspondent Greg Jennett. Leaders never feel the love quite like launch day from family and from friends and colleagues. Bill Shorten's the first Labor leader in almost six years with nothing to fear from front benches behind him. Mr Turnbull says he's got this in the bag. He claims he's already won it. I say to him, you ain't seen anything yet, has he? Before him sat three former leaders, each applauded each experienced in caucus cutdowns, but capable of unity in the Labor cause. When you wave your right arm, I realise there is more fight in Bob Hawke's right arm than the whole of Malcolm Turnbull's cabinet put together. Thank Bob you. Bob Hawke was a founder of Universal Healthcare. Nine Labor leaders later, Bill Shorten staking his future on the 86-year-old's legacy. Medicare. Friends. This election is a referendum on the future of Medicare, hand on heart, from the Labor Party. Labor will never support the privatisation of Medicare, full stop. And he's doubling down with a new claim the Coalition would not only privatise Medicare payments... Um, do you have any flu remedies for me? It's planning to flog the full $160 billion in annual government payments to private providers. What Bill Shorten is doing is peddling an extraordinary lie, so audacious, it defies, it, it defies, but it defies belief. Every single element that is delivered by government for Medicare as part of Medicare will continue to be delivered by government. Mental health, infrastructure and the broadband network are pillars of the shortened campaign and its launch, as is his condemnation of the $48 billion Turnbull corporate tax cut. This is not a plan for the Australian economy. It is foreign aid for foreign companies. Now Mr Shorten's promising his own tax break, but only for small business and only for hiring more workers. A plan to grow small business and help Australians fulfil their potential, as is the birthright of every Australian. Business would get tax relief worth up to $20,000 for hiring five staff who are out of the workforce and want back in. Labor believes in you and we will invest in you. Not new paperwork, just new jobs. 100 positive people brandished 100 placards, their Western Sydney witnesses, to a promise to put people first. Now Labor will spend the next 13 days imploring voters to do the same. Bill Shorten's brought the Labor Party a long way from the rubble of the Rudd Gillard Rudd years. But unity alone does not deliver seats. And this leader needs plenty of them if he's to defeat a first term coalition government and ensure this isn't a dress rehearsal for three years' time. When Malcolm Turnbull took over from Tony Abbott in September last year, Bill Shorten fell well behind in the polls, but he's been making up ground all through the course of this year. The question is, is it enough to win government on July the 2nd? A short time ago, I was joined by Tanya Plipersek, the deputy leader of the Labor Party. Tanya Plipersek, welcome. Great to be with you. When did this election become a referendum on Medicare? Well, Labor's always been the party of Medicare, of protecting and building Medicare, and. Since Tony Abbott started cutting the guts out of our hospitals, uh, we've wanted to protect and build Medicare again. And today, Bill Shorten talked about being able to bulk bill, making sure medicines are affordable. Uh, and today, he announced that we will reverse Malcolm Turnbull's cuts to pathology and diagnostic imaging. 
But it wasn't just about Medicare today. It was about jobs, making sure that small businesses can afford to put on more people. It was about investing in transport. It's also about suicide and uh, prevention and mental health uh, services for young people. Sure, but you're saying the government is planning to privatise Medicare. What evidence do you have for that? Uh, well, you don't set up a, a committee to investigate privatisation options for Medicare unless you want to privatise parts of Medicare. And don't forget, Chris, before the last election, Tony Abbott said no cuts to health, no cuts to education, no change to pensions, no new taxes and no cuts to the ABC and SBS. And he broke every one of those promises. The Prime Why Minister, should we think that the Liberals have changed? Well, the Prime Minister has said today that there will be no change to Medicare and they were only ever looking at privatising the payment system, not the system itself. So it's, isn't this overreach? Uh, absolutely not. They've cut the guts out of Medicare. They've cut hospital funding. They've tried to introduce a GP co-payment. They've done that. Um, by stealth instead, by freezing what doctors are paid so that doctors can't bulk bill anymore. They've cut pathology and diagnostic imaging services so patients have to pay more. It, at every turn, this government have uh, attacked and undermined Medicare. Only Labor is the party of Medicare, so if people want to protect Medicare, they but have to vote Labor. But savings can be made in pathology and diagnostic imaging and need to be made, don't it, they? You know what? When I was Health Minister, I found savings too, but I found them in ways that didn't hurt patients and didn't hit patients' hip pockets. Yes, of course you have to watch every dollar, but we've outlined more than $100 billion of improvements to the budget bottom line, so it is possible to do budget repair that's fair. Finally and briefly, people in seats like Lindsay last time turned against the Labor Party quite sharply. Why should they turn back after just three years? Well, if people in Lindsay want to protect Medicare, they should vote Labor. If they want every child in every school to get a great education, they should vote Labor. If they want an upgrade to Nepean Hospital and a north uh, west to south west railway line, they should vote Labor. If they want decent quality jobs, they should vote Labor. Tanya Pubasek, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Campaign launches are all about the leader and for his insights into how Bill Shorten has gone, not just today, but through the course of this year, I'm joined now by the host of Insiders, Barry Cassidy. And Barry Cassidy, what do you make of Bill Shorten's performance? Political leaders never look better than they do at campaign launches when they get to pull it all together and they deliver a speech in front of their, their own supporters. But even allowing for that, Bill Shorten has defied expectations since January when the Labor Party was languishing in, in the polls at about 46%, two-party preferred. Every time he's been tested so far, he's risen to a new level, and I think he did again today. Where's he made his mark? Today, on, I, I think there were three outstanding issues for Bill Shorten. That w whenever he mentions the Royal Commission into the banks, that goes down well. I think he refined the argument against the Coalition's key election platform, that is, the company tax cuts to drive jobs and growth, by talking about the 0.1% growth dividend. He, the, 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 the quote was $50 billion for a growth dividend that rounds down to zero. I thought that was quite an effective line. But the big one was Medicare. Uh, it, they are really starting to pound this, both in their advertising and again today. Um, that the, the coalition is, is furious and frustrated that this issue is getting any traction at all. Clearly, though, it's showing up in the research on both sides of politics, and you would think it is on, on, the, on the coalition side because that's the one area where, where Malcolm Turnbull went out today to try and quash that by saying there will be no privatisation of, of Medicare, and in fact he said there will be no outsourcing of any of the services around Medicare. Now, Bill Shorten said today that he wouldn't be satisfied with an honourable loss. What did you make of that? Uh, yes, he said, dig a little deeper, try a little harder. Look, this, this concept, this idea that he's still in the race uh, for an honourable loss that shores up his leadership beyond the election. Now, he's annoyed about that, and he should be, because in part it's being fed from within his own party. His message today was that is not the case. He's still in this contest to win it. If he is to win it, of course, then he will have to do exactly that. He will have to dig a little deeper. Barry Cassidy, thank you. Behind the theatre of the Labor Party launch, you get a sense of growing frustration in the campaign team. It's made all the running this year. The Labor Party's been bold, it's released policies, and it has caught up with an opponent that was a long way in front. But you get the sense that they now understand that it might not be quite enough to run down a government with a relentless message of jobs, growth, and above all, stability. We'll be back in Western Sydney next weekend for the Coalition launch.